One of us has to go home and change. Hello and welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. And this episode of Who Wore It Better is about deck building. It's about sweaters. De oh. Deck building, not sweater building. Sweater building. Okay. Well, so deck building games. Fine. I'm going to change all of my notes. And I'm ready. Okay. So deck building is a system where you are a me mechanism, where you have a deck of cards and everyone has the same deck of cards. And then progressively throughout the game, you're going to be purchasing or gaining cards to add to that deck. And every round you draw a few, you use those to play, and then you add some more. And so that's the definition of deck building and we're going with not deck construction or uh, collectible card game, that those types of things, right? This is one mm. of those clarifications that's that's worth making because both are referred to as deck building. That's true. So the more collectible card game stuff happens outside of the actual game itself, whereas this form of deck building that we're talking about happens during the game. It is part of the game. It, and in a lot of ways, it is almost the focal point of the game, mm -hmm. which, as we're going to discuss a little bit about the history of deck building games, which is why people refer to Dominion from 2008 mm -hmm. as the first deck building game. Sure. Uh, but there's, there's this age-old argument whether... Uh, StarCraft, the board game, was considered to be the first deck building game or not. One year earlier. Yeah, 2007. Yeah. First of all, if you've ever seen StarCraft, the board game, the box is approximately the size of, you it's could bury massive. a human in it. Yeah. yeah. Like well, they I call mean, those coffin boxes for a reason. Oh yeah, it's massive. And the deck building part was specifically the attack deck that each person had. So everyone had the same attack deck and then you could get like technology upgrades, which would then allow you to stick cards in that deck shuffle them in so that you could flip over cards and have it in there when you attack. So it had a deck building aspect to it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that wasn't the focal point of the game. It was a big dudes on a map, go out, area control yeah. kind of a game. Um, that would be like saying um, the recent you know, Sleeping Gods, you know, that it has an attack deck. And you add stuff, and you know, you add cards to it, you strengthen it. But I would never sit there and say that Sleeping Gods is... A deck building game? A deck building game, exactly. Sure. Right? Yeah, where Zonal Vaccarino with Dominion really, like, that coined this as a mechanism. It coined it as, like, this is a thing. And that, in fact, was his game Dominion. That was the whole game. Right. And so Dominion came out in 2008. Uh, after that, in 2009, you, would, you saw games absolutely inspired by it. So you had Thunderstone. You had Tanto Quare, which is, uh, I have not played uh, because of the art... Very specifically, I hear that is a really good deck building game, actually, yeah. but it's just, it's a little bit um, anime bosom heavy is the way that I'm going to put it, <laughs> right? So, um, okay. but then in 2010, you had, uh, actually, Arctic Scavengers came out 2009 as well, mm -hmm. uh, so also from Rio Grande Games. By 2010, you start hitting Ascension. A lot of deck building games start coming onto the scene. Puzzle Strike, th that was the first game that took the idea of deck building, turned it into... A bag. You you buy oh, chips and you throw them into a bag and you kind of sort through it that way. So yeah, within two years, you already have a bunch of offshoots of deck building games, some already going into different mediums, uh, kind of making twists and stuff on it. Sure. And Dominion for us was the game that really brought us into modern board gaming and, you know, this hobby in its modern sense. And so Dominion was our big game. We bought all the expansions that were available. I think we had like five or six of them. At the, at the time. time. And, yeah. and I remember at some point they like they'd have even had been said like we're not making any more expansions. Guilds is it, folks. And now we're at like fifteen. So um, I think that was the last number I looked <laughs> up. Plus tons of other little like mini expansions and <laughs> promo packs and all that kind of stuff. All now available in the app, which uh, just got reviewed on the channel, the Dominion app, I think is actually a really phenomenal uh, app. And I've been playing it a lot uh, since downloading it. There you go. There you go. Okay, so the first two games we want to compare is Dominion and DC Deck Building because for our personal experience and our personal board gaming journey, those were two of the first deck building games and really two of the first games that we like hyper got into in the modern hobby. And I remember them having such different feels. So in Dominion, you have 10 piles set up in front of you. You know exactly what cards are available the whole game. It's the same for everybody. And then there's some like general, like those 10 will change every game, but then there's a few 
few cards that are also like standard. You can always get money. You can always get victory point cards. Whereas DC deck building has a giant thing of cards and you just flip over a few cards. And then as you buy stuff, you flip over more cards. And so it's more of like a river of cards. Mm -hmm. A changing lineup market or a river. Mm -hmm. uh, there's... There's like three steady cards that are always out. Yeah. But otherwise, those five cards that are in the lineup, I remember they called it in DC Deck Builder, it's just always changed. You buy one, you replace it. Yeah, and so it could be anything could come out. You could have really cheap cards, you could have really expensive cards. You know, if there's like an overpower card, which there was in that base set, that Superman whatever card. Um, Man of Steel, baby! Yeah, it just was the luck of the, the reveal. But also they had such a different tightness. So Dominion was like, you have one action every round unless a card gives you more actions. You have one buy, so you can get one card unless you have more buys. You can't, you know what I mean? It was like very, very tight. And I remember playing DC deck building game and I'd be like, oh, I don't have to look at everything all at once. I can just like kind of play by the seat of my pants. You know what I mean? Just kind of go. It's a very different style where is where in, in Dominion you have that, that opening setup that's the setup for the game. Mm -hmm. So you get to kind of do that thing where you say, okay, well, I guess I'll try leaning into these things. You could play more tactically and just say, ooh, I'm feeling it out. I guess I want to throw some of this in there. I want to mm -hmm. throw more of this ingredient. Oh, you know, this this stew needs a little bit, a few more bay leaves. Ooh, it needs more turmeric. You could play it that kind of way. Yeah. Or you could kind of just hyper fix it on the opening and say, okay, if I get a 3-4, I'm going to do village silver. I'm going to, you know. Yeah, that's true. And you true. can really plan it out. It's funny because you can still win either way. Because part of it is the luck of the draw. However, there's some people out there that are very good at the, <coughs> the recipe building, so to speak, and less of the taste as you go. Right. That's pretty intense. No, and, and, and the people who have played Dominion literally hundreds or thousands of times yeah. are going to be going to be able to visualize or see that lineup and say, this is what I'm going to go with, right? It might not be a winning strategy, but like it's going to be a dang good one. Now, do you have a preference between the two? I really do prefer, for the most part, just playing... Dominion or playing games like Dominion that have these stacks of cards that are more or less stagnant, right? Uh, because I like that strategic experience. That being said, it's still fun to play. I mean, Ascension has done this for a long time. Mm -hmm. DC Deck Builder. Uh, and I know a lot of people are saying, like, why aren't you comparing Dominion with, say, Ascension? Because we, we just haven't played it that much. Yeah, th this is this is our show. We do what we want. <laughs> yep. We played so much DC Deck Builder. So very much. Yeah, that's the thing is we had all the expansions. So early on in my board gaming career, I guess, or non-career, just hobbiness, um, I really preferred DC Deck Building because I felt like the, the front loading of every single game felt so much with Dominion. But now I definitely feel like I like Dominion more. I think I enjoy the less luck. I enjoy that they're typically quicker games as well. Um, and so I just enjoy that. Yeah. All right. So that's our first that's comparison. Our first one. So the uh, the second one here. Mm -hmm. Introduce me to your, your brainwave thoughts. My brainwaves. Yes. Um, so we were talking, my brainwave thoughts, about Aeon's End. And so um, Aeon's End is one of those games where you don't shuffle your deck at the end. And this is fascinating when I was told about this. Um, and then Thunderstone is just another game where you do shuffle your deck. And lots of deck builders, most of them you do. But I thought most these would be do. interesting ones to compare. So both have kind of a combat focus on mm -hmm. them, which is why I think this would be an interesting comparison, right? So in A.N.'s End, it's a cooperative game. You are deck building and trying to create a deck that will take down the main nemesis very well. Mm -hmm. the, the, the gimmick of <clears throat> not shuffling your deck means that, and I say gimmick loosely, right? I mean, it's it's right. it's a selling point. It's a feature of the game. Uh, and it's an important one because if you have different types of cards that jive well together, you have a lot of control in the order that you discard cards. When, when you see a card on top of your discard pile and you purchase a new one to put on top of it, you know that those cards are going to wind up close together. You have a decent amount of, of control, and yet the game doesn't become stagnant or stale. Yeah, it's interesting because going into it, when I was first explained this concept, I thought, wow, I'm going to have so much control because I get frustrated occasionally when I've shuffled my deck and I'm like, oh man, those same two cards never showed up the entire game together. Like I needed that one combination and I could buy so much. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting because you have some control where you're like, yes, I have a spell that requires me to discard other spells, you know, to make it fire off. I can plan that together. If I need those gems, I can plan it together. But... At the same time, like, you can only plan so much. 
Sure, yeah, the, the nemesis will cause you to discard cards at a different rate than you expected yeah. or, or whatever it might be. Uh, but I, I do still really like that, generally speaking, you can bundle things together. And they might just be the one card off for, from when you draw five, and the last card was like, no, that's supposed to go with that one, you know? <laughs> it's interesting because in Thunderstone, you also have some of those comparisons where you want to put stuff together. You need to have a person and a weapon. You know what I mean? You want to put that weapon with them, and they have to have, they have to be strong enough to hold the weapon, yeah. and so yeah, you, you want to make those connections. Axe. Hobbits, darn it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you want them to be able to, like, hold that weapon, and you're like, okay, well, now I have these cards. Okay, do I want to go fight something now? Yes, because I can do it. But when you have, like, a little bit of attack power and a little bit of money, and you're like, do I want to go buy cards or do I want to go fight cards? What do I want to do? So, and then you can do both as well. You can unlock your breaches or you can tap, th- what do you call it? Tap them? Sure. Oh, uh, Turn them, prep, rip, them. prep them, prep them. I think that's yeah, the word. Prep. Yeah, so you can prep the breaches and you put your spells out and you can fire them off at the beginning. Like you can do a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. So I think if I had to choose, I would choose Aeon's End because I do enjoy that little bit of control that it adds. It still is random to the sense of like you're not going to perfectly reshuffle your cards every time. Um, you're not necessarily to get those two cards together, but you're more likely to. Um, and then I also like the, the way that the attacking works a little bit more. Yeah, because... Um, I think it was in the first edition of Thunderstone, like, you could not, if you had that axe but no wielder for it, you you were like, oh, bummer, and then you just discard everything. But, like, in later iterations, there are more ways to be able to try to hold on to cards to, you know, I'm going to sacrifice one of my card draws, essentially, to get more, you know, to try to make that combination. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, still has some frustrations to it, you know, where you're, if you just luck into it correctly then you just lucked into. You don't need mitigation. But if you're sitting there going like, okay, I'm taking a small hit to try to mitigate this, it's it's not as fun. But I don't want every deck building game to be Anne's End either. That's true. That is true. Well, and, and uh, if you remember in DC Deck Builder, going back to that, in the first expansion, there was that combo that's if you have Kyle Rayner and if you get three of the lantern rings, three different colored oh, lantern yeah, yeah, rings, yeah. You win. You just win. <laughs> Straight up. That was the first time I ever saw like an alternate just like, you win. Like, don't count up points, whatever. It just, you're done. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you want to have a little bit of like that Exodia type thing going on, you need to be able to have to shuffle up the cards. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. you'd have oh, yeah. too much control. Too much control, for sure. Okay, the last comparisons we want to do is actually bag building. So bag building is um, where instead of having cards, you have a bag of little chips. Those chips often come out and become like worker placement character kind of things. And so once you've filled up an action spot with enough of the workers, you can fire off that action. Um, and so it's it's a similar but different. It is, it, for the most part, is a deck of... Thi- a lot of I think Board Game Geek or a lot of people call this pool building because you're building up yeah. a pool of resources or different tokens uh, bag building makes it sound like you're building up the bag, but that's always what I've called it. Yeah. Like deck building, you're literally making the deck. Bag building, like I have the bag, I'm putting the, the stuff in it, but yeah. I'm not that pedantic. <laughs> um, so bag building is really, uh, well, so the, the first game on the comparison here mm-hmm. is 2014's Orleans, or as some people call it. Orleans. Yes. Uh, not I. Orleans will do just fine. <laughs> And so with this one, you pulled out a certain number of tokens each round that you were, you know, you can customize kind of the distribution of stuff in your bag. Uh, but the big thing that was a little bit of a shocker for me is you don't cycle through your entire bag. At the end of the round, once you've pulled out enough of the tokens, you then take everything you've spent and you throw them back in there mm-hmm. along with the ones that you weren't lucky enough to, to yoink out of the bag. Yeah. I remember that was one of the... So it's funny because the other game we're comparing it to is Altiplano. And I literally played these back to back. Like one day I played one, the other one... Like Friday I played Orleone and then Saturday I played Altiplano. Yeah, and I had played Altiplano first. You uh, had. Before you had. Like a few weeks before, right? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. And so it was interesting because I liked the concept like from a from a conceptual point. I liked Altiplano better. But then I remember enjoying Orleone more between the two at first, mm. because I had just played that first, I think. It was your first kiss, right? It was, it your was first literally, love. yeah, it was my literally my first uh, pool building love. Mm-hmm. Um, but then over time, I think Altiplano has had more staying power for me. And yeah. I think a lot of it is that luck. I get really frustrated when I can't <laughs> uh, predict stuff. 
Because because in Alta Plata, the big difference is you have a bag, you pull out a certain number of tokens each round, and you use it to activate stuff. You then take that and you dump it into this little box on the side. Mm -hmm. And then that's your discard pile. That's the functional equivalent of a discard pile. So the next turn, you take out a certain number of tokens from the bag. You cycle through the entire bag before you take all the contents and dump it back in. Yeah. Uh, Life of the Amazonia is a recent bag building game, pool building game, that did this same type of a thing. I have yet to try that one, but I'm very interested in it because of that. Because... Mm -hmm. I really do prefer this. Uh, Orleans is one of those hard games for me to come back to because I just, like, I, I built up so much. I have, like, three wild tokens in my bag. Can't wait to draw them. Never see any of them. It's so sad. It really is. It's so sad. I'm okay with luck in games, but it's just, at some point, you're like, let the luck even out. I always, in bag building games, make sure I stick my fingers in the corners. That way I don't miss anything. Because oh, you know yeah. that one chip that you want is stuck in the corner. Yes. Just yes. bound to be. Yeah, so between the two, I would pick Altiplano. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I would as well. I love being we, able to cycle through all of my tokens. We need to stop agreeing on all of these things. I don't know. Okay, pick, ne- make more controversial next uh, ones we need comparisons. To, right? Yeah. Dudes on Maps games. That'll be their next Who Wore It Better. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm hiding. I'm hiding. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, do, uh, do you have any other comparisons that you would like to throw out there? And then uh, we'll yeah. try to uh, respond to some of the comments. And then if you have different thoughts as well, we'd love to hear them. For sure. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. And we want to know who you think wore it better. Welcome to the Dice Tower. I was making a goofy face.